What's up, people? I'm Zog here with a step-by-step -step tutorial for you. Now, I know intros suck, but bear with me. This will be quick. These tutorials are not meant to explain the mod in general. There is or will be a video in this same playlist, link in the description if you're not already there, that will explain the mod. But this one, in each step-by-step -step tutorial, will only describe one part or one setup within the mod. I always have series going on the channel. I would really appreciate it if you would check those out. Obviously, everything you need to find is going to be on my channel page. And of course, other forms of support are also available in the links in the description. Links to everything I've just described are in the description, so check all those out. But let's go ahead and get to it. If you're here, you would like to know exactly how to get Ember generation in your world. And this is the setup we're about to make. Uh, but it should be noted that this is Embers Rekindled, and I know by now that is probably obvious considering how long it's been since the original mod was updated, but just for clarification, Embers Rekindled, the, the updated version. Um, but it is the only one that's been maintained for the past year or so, so chances are that's the one you're using. But anyway, uh, if this is what you were trying to get to, then here is your complete resource list for this entire setup. Just a couple things to note here. As you can see, our copper block underneath gives a 3x uh, with production multiplier, which is the highest you can get for this particular refinery. Uh, and it is most likely the cheapest. It's most likely what you're going to have. But you can also use, if you don't for some reason have copper, you can use silver or electrum to get the 3x. You can also use, if you don't have anything else, uh, Dawnstone actually doesn't work for anything. Uh, I just checked that one. But tin or bronze or lead, these guys do give a production multiplier, but it's not as high. So if you're just trying to get it done real quick, you can use other metals is what the, the mod considers these. They're metal blocks. Um, you can use them to increase your production multiplier by at least a little bit until you can go ahead and get some copper, silver, or electrum. But those three are seemingly the best blocks you can use to uh, place the refinery on in order to, to, to get the highest amount of yield from each of your crystals that you're going to be pumping into the thing. Also, I do assume that you have a tank or some infinite water source available, okay? We do go through crafting a fluid extractor. So your best bet before you start this is to have an infinite water source piped into a drum or even craft this one here from Overloaded if you have it available. It's pretty cheap, actually. It's one of my favorites. But... All I'm expecting is that you have a tank of water available, something that can hold a bunch of water. I'm not sure how much this guy uses or how fast it'll go through because I've always had the infinite water source and usually it's pretty easy to get one of those. So yeah, but a tank that the extractor we're going to craft can be placed on. The resources in this chest are the ones for Project Ozone 3, but other mods can make things more difficult and change it so that what you see here may not be enough or may be completely different from what you need. Uh, but go ahead and follow along. It should get you at least started with it at the very least. And in most cases, you're gonna get all the way through it because there aren't too many mod packs that change the recipes that much. So you should be fine. But just in case, that is a possibility and you should be aware of it. It should also be noted that the extractors are included in the recipe list, including the fluid extractor back there, all of the extractors. And I also include enough lead for uh, a batch of item pipes, which is eight of them. But if you want to move in any of these little uh, sections further apart, you want to move your, your uh, bore here, you know, out like 50 blocks, you can, but you just have to make sure you need three extra lead for every eight pipes you want. And the same for this, only it's iron. For every eight pipes, fluid pipes you need, you need an extra three iron. Now that all the special circumstances are covered and explained, it is now finally time to start crafting. Now all of these things should be pretty obvious of what they are, but I figured I'd hover over them just in case. But go ahead and take everything in your inventory. It's time we get started with stuff. Step one is to go ahead and put in all of these materials to get 56 Kamenite blends, and then we're going to combine six of them. Let's see if I can get six properly. That, that's, that's seven. 
But that's fine. And then you're going to do this and you're going to smelt them all. Then go ahead and make three copper blocks. The extras are going to be needed, but not yet. Now you want to take five of your lead and turn it into five lead plates. Your mod pack should have a way for you to do that. Now you want to take five lead and one iron and turn it into five lead plates and one iron plate. You sh your mod pack should have a way for you to do that. Then you want to make one batch of item pipes and one batch of fluid pipes. Now we're going to go ahead and start some of this crafters. You want one fluid extractor and you want three item extractors. Let's, let's try to, let's not do that. How about we do this and only three of them. Now we're going to go ahead and make the item transfer. You only need one batch because one batch does give you all four that we need. So now we're going to go ahead and make one furnace and four chests. All right, so then you go ahead and find the pressure refinery and go ahead and craft that guy. And you can go ahead, get the ember receptor and the ember emitter. Only one batch of each is enough. And you can go ahead and make two compasses. We'll go ahead and grab the Kamenite bricks and make 10 batches of these. And what's going to happen is you'll have four left over that we aren't, I don't know how I got 64 of those, that we're not going to use. And we're also going to turn them, one batch of them, into stairs. Now we're going to make two mechanical cores and one ember bore. Now you're going to go ahead and take the last four planks and just get two batches of sticks and they're going to turn five of them into levers. Now one of those sticks is one you want which I will show you how to use a little bit later but uh, basically it's just used to un unclog pipes. You can read about it in the codex. But now we're gonna go ahead and make the hammer. The eight lava buckets are just as they are. There's no change needed and they're not used for recipes. And one of the copper blocks, remember, goes underneath our refinery so that also doesn't need to change. You can set those on with your uh, completed items. Then we're gonna go ahead and craft the copper cell and and for some reason, sometimes the materials just aren't being used. That's the second time it's happened. It happened with the Kamenite plates that we had. I still had six down here for some reason, even though we used them for the extractors. And you saw that that copper one didn't didn't move. Oh, it was the uh, the the one that we had up here. Okay, never mind. I'm aware. I'm I'm tracking. I've got this. It's okay. Anyway. Um, as I mentioned, I, I added three extra lead ingots to this so you can turn one of them into a plate and then craft those item pipes. Uh, one batch of the item pipes since we have none left. You can also bring the fluid pipes back over. These are all materials you don't need. These are going to be your extras uh, just since crafting recipes tend to give you more than just one or two items. Uh, but you're going to use some of the fluid pipes and you're going to need uh, the one batch of item pipes at least, if not more than that. But remember, three extra lead per eight pieces of item pipe and three extra iron for each eight pieces of fluid pipe. Now, one thing to note is that I was off by eight planks. Um, I forgot about this chest. Now... I'm not going to worry about going back and revising the list because if you haven't gotten planks by now, chances are you probably shouldn't be building this. So I'm going to go ahead and assume you have a means to get at least one more little chest or some other storage medium. This is just the fuel input chest, which you can use furnace fuels for. So coal, coal, well, mine's empty, but uh, coal is what you're looking for. So uh, coal or you know anything else. Anyway, you get the idea. So... Basically, three blocks. You saw I just, broke, I just broke three blocks out, which lets the bore barely touch bedrock, which is what you want. You do not want it sunk into bedrock at all. This is just 
right on top. It's just supposed to touch bedrock. Now, as, uh, as you can see here, there's only one port, which means you can do in or out, which is why we have the other mechanical core. This allows you to have multiple ports. So you can put your chest right beside it, put the item extractor there, put one of the item pipes there, and go ahead and put a lever on this and turn it on. So now anything you put into this chest will try to go into the bore, meaning furnace fuels, anything that can burn, wood or coal. I think, it, I think wood or coal. I've used coal and it works fine. So that's probably what you're gonna use. But anyway, um, any of that stuff will work. It'll turn on and it will start to collect things into this block. So then you can go ahead and put an item extractor onto that with a lever, turn that guy on, and you can drag this guy out as far as you wish, wherever it is you want it to go to, uh, and the items will, you know, go there because they're pipes and that's, that's kind of how pipes work. Now, item pipes are funny. So as soon as you've got them all the way to the end like this, you're gonna make a setup like this, but then you're gonna take your hammer and right click. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna prevent it from going around and around and then sometimes going up and da, 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 da. These pipes can clog very, very easily if the pipes are not organized properly. So by doing this, they have to stop uh, at the end and they're gonna go in wherever they need to go. So then you're gonna take your four item transfers and you're gonna connect them just like so. Then you can go ahead and take the other four chests and place them like this. And as soon as you turn this guy on, you're gonna start collecting items uh, into here. And once you do, as you can see over here, once we get a few of the items, we'll go ahead and collect a couple of these guys just as a little bit. Um, and if you're not getting items in here, you can temporary, temporarily add a chest right on the end of this. And the items will go straight into it for a little while until you have one of each. The only reason you need one of each is just so you can set these guys. Now you wanna put the ones that we're not gonna be sending anywhere else into the bottom ones because it just makes the piping easier later. And then the other ones can go into the top. And it doesn't matter exactly where as long as the the correct two are on the top and the correct two are on the bottom. Uh, basically, the shards you're gonna pump into your refinery are going on the top. And as you can see, that way it, the pipe remains straight and it doesn't bend or curve or anything, which makes it easier. Now, like I just mentioned, you wanna go ahead and take that and lead that wherever it is. This is gonna be a shortcut because the next one's a little bit of a build. But just bring this exactly where you want it, but a few blocks away. Now, once that is drawn out exactly where you want it, go ahead and put a, you know, build the structure like this, basically, so there's a three by three empty in the middle. And you put your copper block in the middle of that three by three and put lava all the way around it. Then go ahead and put your pressure refinery right on top of the copper. Now, wherever you have your water source, go ahead and put down the drum or whatever, wherever it's being collected and put your fluid extractor right on top. And just like everything else, this does also require a lever to be powered for it to actually be drawn anywhere. Then you go ahead and connect that up to the base of your pressure refinery. And if you've done it correctly, you'll see in the tooltip there, it says water 8,000 out of 8,000, or maybe it'll go slower based on what kind of water uh, production you have, but you should see it filling up. Now you go ahead and place down your copper cell somewhere you want access to the ember. This is where your ember is going to be stored. Uh, it can be a decent distance away, but don't choose a distance too far because eventually the, the ember transfer that flies through the air will start to lose uh, the amount of ember it has. So don't go too far. Uh, this distance is fine. You could probably go even about here. I don't know exactly how far you could go. Uh, before you start to lose ember. We'll try this distance just so you can actually see if it works or not. But uh, you might even be able to go further. I'm not sure how far you can go with this. I have not tested that, that concept. But go ahead and put an ember receiver or receptor there and an ember emitter here. Now here's one of the tricky bits. I told you there was a couple tricky bits. You could probably set up the system you know, just as it is, uh, and you would have gotten most of the way through. This part may or may not have tripped you up though. In order to link these two together, you hold shift and right click on the receptor first. Remember, hold shift and right click, then let go of shift and just right click on the emitter. Now, the other thing that might trip you up is that this also requires a lever too. And once you turn it on, it'll be good. Now, 
all of the levers are on at the moment. The only thing that th makes this thing not work is that we have not put our fuel in the chest. I always do that last because it's pretty cool to see the system start to go all on its own. Um, not that you really see a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of activity, but you know what I mean. And then uh, you're pretty much good to go after this. Now I've gone ahead and put dials on here. And as you can see, we are at a production multiplier of 3x as we expected. And we can kind of see the amounts and everything. And again, the dials are very useful, but they are not included in this. So if you wanted to go ahead and get a few dials, go ahead, look up the recipe, collect those uh, supplies and make a few because they are handy. But for this purpose, I'm just using it so you can see. I know this is going to work, but I'm just doing it so you can see. Now, if you load this up, watch how fast this thing takes fuel. It's wicked. So crazy. But load it up with fuel. You'll see that it stops. Um, these little particles here means that there is a clog. But at the moment, that makes sense for this because there's still items in the pipe. There just isn't enough room in the core or the bore to hold any more fuel. So as it uses them, these items will get cleared out. This little smoke thing does not indicate any kind of explosion or any kind of issue at all. It just means there are items in the pipe and that maybe you should think about if they're supposed to be there. And in this case, they are. So you're going to be just fine. Down here, you should see items start to come in here sooner or later, as soon as it decides to start creating some. This guy is on, correct? It is. So yeah, those should start getting extracted soon. And once they do, and here you go, um, they're actually being extracted as it is. We just haven't gotten any of the ones in the top, or the bottom, I mean, none of these guys yet. But the, the crystals, as soon as they are being sent into this chest, they're being sent out. And you can see this guy is now generating, as you can see, his ember is kind of going up slash down a little bit. This guy, production, yeah. So this guy's there, as you can see. It looks like it shoots 30 at a time. Yeah, so it, it's it's not losing any. And I believe uh, there will be a visual indicator of when Ember is being lost. So if you wanted to test your limits and see how far away this thing can shoot before it starts to lose Ember, feel free. You should be able to see it in the air to tell you to move your cell closer if you need to. But as you can see, we are collecting Ember. This guy is uh, only at 4,000 so far, but it can hold 24,000. And worst case scenario, you can also put emitters on this side, this side, and this side and connect them to other cells if you want to, to in, you know, vastly increase your Ember storage. It will work. Uh, granted, the production may not be fast enough to fill all of them up very quickly, but if you're waiting for long enough, it will fill them all up and you will be fine with it. But there is your Ember production. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit the like button. Again, please do visit my channel and check out some of the series I have going on. I would really much appreciate it. Uh, if you wanted to support me, check out the links in the description. Other than that, I hope it helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. But thank you for watching. Do what you do, and I will see you next time. Peace out, peeps.